Uhuru. I just want to thank, um, again, these uh, incredible organizers here in Washington, D.C., from the party who made this happen. Uh, made it happen despite uh, the contradictions that we presented you from the national office um, in St. Petersburg, Florida, because I know some of those contradictions uh, that we were responsible for there. And despite the contradiction that was that we ran into here with the church, so that uh, I think it was two days ago that we finally got this place after the initial place uh, uh, backed out on us. We put out all the information saying where African Liberation Day was going to be happening, et cetera. And they decided that we were anti-government and they didn't like that, so we couldn't have it uh, at the church. And um, so these comrades here in D.C., uh, struggling with everything on the ground, they hustle. And like I said, about two days ago, they were able to consolidate this place. So that was a factor. Now, the other thing I want to say uh, is uh, I want to thank everybody for coming out and, and I guess be redundant to the extent that uh, we've come through a process in this country in terms of the struggle here and various other places around the world where actual revolution was defeated. We had a revolutionary movement that was defeated. And some people don't want to don't want to recognize that or they deny that that happened. But uh, if you were around, you, were, you saw the funerals and you saw the tanks, you know, military tanks in our communities. You saw the 102nd Airborne, you know, occupy uh, Detroit and kill a lot of people there. Um, in, and uh, some of our most uh, significant leaders, uh, obviously here uh, in this country, you're talking about Malcolm, you're talking about King, uh, and, but people forget, too, that uh, two days uh, after the assassination of Martin Luther King, uh, uh, Bobby Hutton was murdered by the Oakland Police Department, the member of the Black Panther Party, 17-year-old uh, Bobby Hutton. And uh, uh, so uh, scores of people were uh, killed in this country, uh, people who were revolutionaries. Uh, many uh, other people were rounded up and imprisoned. Some of them are still in prison today. Uh, Sundiata Okoli, you know, a giant, a champion, you know, of our people. And the others, Anthony Bottoms and, and uh, other forces, Asada Shakur, who's actually uh, having to be underground in Cuba. Uh, because the, the uh, a million dollar bounty is on her head right now, similar to you know what they did with Osama bin Laden in terms of offering bounties uh, uh, for people, and these are people who fought for us. They killed uh, Patrice Lumumba. This government did. Uh, uh, this government was in a virtual race uh, with the French and the Belgians to see who could kill, uh, who could capture and kill Lumumba first. Uh, and uh, so they overthrew Nkrumah. Uh, they were determined that we should never be free, that we should never be free, that we should continue to live uh, a life of uh, misery forever. Uh, and as a consequence of the defeat of that revolution, as a consequence of what they refer to as counterinsurgency, they've developed a science, if you will, of repressing the uh, aspirations of people who want to be free. They declared efforts to win freedom uh, as insurgency. They've even said that uh, at a point where a movement achieves uh, uh, recognition as an insurgency, other countries and what have you can legitimately, legitimately uh, you know, unite and help them, which is why they constructed this false thing in Libya today, so that they can now claim that they're recognizing an insurgent movement uh, in Libya. Uh, but they've created a science of, uh, of uh, putting down uh, the aspirations of people to be free. And what we say is that the, uh, the most progressive process, the most progressive trajectory on earth today is this, is this trajectory that will press peoples around the world to end this relationship that we have with imperialism. Whether it is in Iraq, uh, Afghanistan, uh, throughout the Americas, and what have you, people have just determined not to live like this anymore. And we have to, we have to conclude that we're not going to live like this anymore also. But part of what's necessary for that is, has to be our ability, first of all, to recognize who we are as a people. We are Africans. 
And, and the only reason that's a struggle for some people is because of the work that our oppressors have done uh, to make Africa such a shameful, uh, uh, dreadful uh, place for us. They've robbed us of our memory. We don't, uh, we, we, uh, don't recognize that for African, that human civilization, human life originated in Africa. I remember growing up and them teaching me that Africans didn't have written language. Only thing we had was oral language. I was in Mexico not too long ago and I went to some of the Mayan ruins. You know about the Mayans, right? Uh, who at one juncture, uh, who they will tell you was the first people in the Americas. And then you say, well, and they, and they have constructed this notion that the Mayans are people who, uh, who's descend, who's, uh, who, who are descended from the uh, eight people who walked from Asia uh, across the Barren Strait uh, to get to what we now call the Americas. I said, well, haven't you heard of the Olmecs? Haven't you heard of the Olmecs? And when I said Olmec, he said, he said, oh yeah, the Olmeca. This is the Mexican. He said, that's the mother culture. Have you ever seen the pictures of the Olmeca civilization, things that the Olmeca left? Incredible, you know, uh, uh, colossal stone heads. You know, uh, look like this brother sitting here. And, and uh, uh, black people. Uh, uh, wearing helmets. You know, you know they wore helmets. You know why they, they had helmets on? Because the Olmeca invented the game that they call football, soccer. Did you know that? And the Olmeca, the, the, the Mayans, they said were here 2,000 years before uh, what the, Jesus, right? Christ. But the Olmeca were here 3,000 years before the Maya got here. Then they you know, you research it, and then you can find out that, <laughs> that the Olmeca had a written language. It looks very much like the, like the hieroglyphics that you see in Egypt. And if people are confused, because some people think Egypt is not Africa, you know, they think that somehow this thing happened there. Uh, people are confused about that, and they said the language they spoke was similar, similar to language spoken in parts of what they now call Mali, and, uh, and uh, uh, where was Sankara from? And Burkina Faso. This, this is African language. This is African, and they tell we don't have a civilization. When the reality is African people, that we were building pyramids, created magnificent civilizations before Europe mastered fire. That's a literal truth. I don't, I don't have to make this up. But they have to take this from our memory. They take this from our memory and then they define for us who we are. They say you were nobody until you met us. They actually made me as a young person in my ignorance. As a young person they had me being happy that slavery happened. Because if it weren't for slavery I would have been left in Africa with the monkeys. <laughs> and Tarzan and stuff like that. So, they had me believing that I had been rescued by white people from, from barbarism. When the fact is that it was barbarism that was responsible for my having been snatched up out of Africa and brought to the Americas. We are African people. And it's something that we should wear as a badge of honor, not shame. Africa. And uh, not only are we Africans here, but we are a dispersed nation, one nation. This notion of a... Of, uh, of this false consciousness that they create in our head, an African-American. What the hell is an African? How can you be an African and American at the same time? That's a contradiction in terms. America was built at the expense of Africa. To be an African-American is to be a slave and a slave master at the same time. You can't be both. You've got to be one or the other. Right? So we were Africans when we got on that damn ship in Africa, and we were Africans when we got off that ship. You know, here in Haiti and all the other places that they kidnapped us and took us to. They took so many people out of Angola. It's a literal truth. They snatched up so many Africans out of what they now call Angola. That they actually, when the, when the Portuguese started trying to, trying to produce in Angola, they didn't have enough workers to do it. 
Jackson had to go to Brazil, go back to Brazil, take some of the Africans who they had taken from Angola and take them back there. They raided Africa, and it's what's really important for us to understand is this. Because I believe in reparations, but I know that reparations is something that we're going to have to take. Ain't nobody going to give us nothing. If, if we take what belongs to us, then that means that America and Europe uh, is back into poverty, back in the Stone Ages. And that's all right with me, uh, because white people need to get jobs. Uh, <laughs> Because I'm not, I'm not against, I'm not, don't, don't take this as anti-white. I, I believe that they should be employed, that's all. Get a job and stop living off every damn body else. That's the only issue that I have there. We are one African people. And that's something that we are going to have to accept. Not only that we are Africans. Second, that despite the fact that we are Africans, that ain't enough to recognize it. Not just Africans, but one nation. I didn't say African peoples. You've heard that before. We are an African people and African people. No, we are Africans. There is one African people. There's an African nation dispersed around the world, confused as hell, with false consciousness. You know, just like I talk about African American, you got black Brits, Afro Brazilians, Afro French, and what have you. You've got the, the, the examples that I love to use in terms of false consciousness. It's what you can find in West Africa. This place they call Cameroon. Uh, named by the Portuguese. Because when the Portuguese got there, they found a lot of shrimp. And Cameroon comes from the Portuguese word for shrimp. So you got people walking around calling themselves shrimp. But they are not shrimp, they are Africans. Or if you go to Ivory Coast, Cote d'Ivoire. You got a situation where Europeans, they needed ivory from the elephants to make billiard balls and piano keys. And so they went there and killed all kinds of elephants to take the tusk. They called the place the Ivory Coast. You got Africans who are walking around calling themselves elephant tusks. But they are not elephant tusks, they are Africans, just as we are Africans. That is a false consciousness that has been imposed on us by imperialism, by the empire. And we must reject it. We must reject all the definitions of our reality that's imposed on us by imperialism. We are one people. We are an African people. And our power in the final analysis lies in our ability to recognize that we are one African people dispersed around the world, a nation that has to be consolidated in order to know a future for ourselves and for our children. And damn it, we have a responsibility to do that. The white nation, I call it a white nation. I call it a European nation. It's something that was forged in the process of slavery and colonialism. Before slavery, before colonialism, the people of Europe identified and defined themselves primarily in relationship to each other. Europe, the thing that we call Europe now, which is a relatively new phenomenon, the place that we recognize as Europe, wasn't even called that up until the 17th century, 1700s or something. This thing that we call Europe is something where it was known as a place of warring tribes, just Goths and Visigoths and Celts and all these other people fighting against each other, where looting was a means of production. The concept barber, barbarism and barbarian comes from there. Vandals come from Europe and what have you, although they use those terms to describe us now. But the thing that consolidated Europe that gave European a sense of sameness so that they no longer define themselves primarily in relationship to each other was slavery, the enslavement of African people. Now, the colonization of other peoples around the world. Now, white man, the European, is born out of that process. So now these people who define themselves primarily in relationship to each other through this cooperative and collective looting and enslavement of the rest of the world, they begun to define themselves in relationship to the rest of us. This is the birth of the white man. This is the birth of the concept of Europe. This identification that united all of them. This sense of sameness. 
that you see experiencing existing in what we now know as Europe. This sense of sameness is something that we experience as well. If we don't think about it, we do. That's why Africans, when I was in Berlin, Germany, an African who was born in Ethiopia, uh, he approached me after Katrina. He said, and I agreed that we have to create our own, that they have their red cross, we have to create our black onk. That's what Abdeb is. So that he, he, living in Berlin, Germany, coming from Ethiopia, seeing what was happening to black people in Katrina, recognize that we are one people and we have to have ability as black people to respond to whatever kind of crisis that uh, impact on all of us. Because there is a sense of sameness that's there. So we might call ourselves this and that when we, we're dealing with each other, but when it comes to us against the rest of the world, it's quite clear that we are one people. We have a sense of sameness and we have to identify that sameness. We are African people. We are Africans, Africans, Africans. This is who we are. This is not a little question. This is a big question. Because Africa is trapped in these artificial borders that they created in Africa and then they created in the rest of the world. And because of that, Africa does not have a continental-wide economy, does it? And if Africa doesn't have a continental-wide economy, it doesn't have a continental-wide government, it doesn't have a continental-wide capacity to defend itself, defense strategy, anything like that. White people come, they say, I'm going to attack this place right here in Africa, and the rest of us stand by and watch it because, after all, that's Sierra Leone, and that's not the rest of us, all right? We don't, we don't recognize the fact that we have to respond to